In the year 1859, when Queensland separated from New South Wales to become a separate colony, and there's a spider web just in front of me. In 1859, when Queensland separated from New South Wales, this area was known as Bulimba Creek, and it was opened up to farming, mainly fruit and vegetables. And just two years later, in 1861, the first bridge was built over Doughboy Creek. Today we know it as Bulimba Creek. And it was also in 1861 that the very first sugar cane was planted in this area. There's going to be a voiceover in a moment. Ah, here it is. Built in Cleveland in 1864 and later converted into a floating sugar and rum processing facility, the steamship Walrus was a familiar sight along the Bulimba Creek as it collected and processed sugar from the many sugarcane growers in the area. In 1883, it ran aground on the banks of the Albert River at Bean Lee. The distillery machinery on board was purchased by sugar growers Francis Gooding and John Davy, who used it to establish the Bean Lee Rum Distillery. Today, it is Australia's oldest operating distillery. With the bridge completed over the creek, the next major construction in this area was the school. This is the site of Bulimba Creek School, and it opened on the 9th of May, 1864. However, in 1866, the name was changed to Doughboy Creek Mixed School. Then in 1869, it became the Doughboy Creek Primary School. In 1870, it changed its name to become the Doughboy Primary School. And in 1876, it became the Hemant Primary School. And that's the way it stayed for well over 100 years. And it was here in the school in 1893 that the good people of Hemant huddled together for safety during the floods of that year. Today, this school is now known as the Hemant Flexible Learning Centre. It is a place designed for students who are disengaged from mainstream education. So in 1866, this area was known as Bulimba Creek. But for reasons which are unlikely to become clear, it changed its name to Doughboy Creek. In 1866, William Gibson acquired some sugarcane cuttings from Lewis Hope of Ormiston. He built Ormiston House. In 1869, he and his sons established their sugar milling business, initially using horsepower to crush the sugarcane. It was located just over the other side of Bulimba Creek, near the current Murray substation. Upon importing sugar crushing machinery from Clydesdale in Scotland, William Gibson renamed his mill the Clydesdale Sugar Mill. So where I'm walking right now is the centre of town of Hammond. And it's no coincidence that it was built on the highest ground in this area. All around it is really quite flat and marshy and, and boggy, but this is a hill. This is the only hill in the area. So the school was, uh, was put there. And then, of course, the, um, the church, which is just over that way. And here you've got a post office. There has been a post office here since about the 1870s, I believe. This obviously isn't it. This is, looks like it was built in the 60s. Across the road here. Something I didn't expect, here on the grounds of the church, right in front of me, is the old Hemant police cell. Oh, look at that. An old police cell. This is just like the one, or very similar to the one up at Kangaroo Point that I saw in my Kangaroo Point video. eighteen sixty six the Hammond Christian Community Church. It was originally opened as the Tingalpa Wesleyan Methodist Church. And apparently it's one of the oldest still in use churches in Queensland. And then there was another name change from Doughboy Creek to Clydesdale.
Hemant Cemetery. This was laid out in 1875. It was originally known as Tingalpa Cemetery. It was in 1913 that the name changed to Hemant Cemetery. And as reported in the Courier Mail on the 25th of June 1952, Hemant Cemetery was chosen to be adjusted into more of a park-like cemetery. And it was such a success that it became the model for other cemeteries in Brisbane. In 1876, Doughboy Creek changed its name to Hemant, named after William Hemant. He represented the Belimba electorate from 1873 until 1876. He was born in 1838 in Whittlesea, Cambridgeshire in England. This is according to the Queensland Parliament archives. However, the Australian Dictionary of Biography says he was born in Kirkgate in Yorkshire. He came out to Australia and sought his fortune during the gold rush in Victoria. He then came to Queensland and opened a drapery store on Queen Street with a guy named Alexander Stewart. It is believed that the fire that ignited the Great Fire of Brisbane in 1864 started in the basement of their drapery store. In 1876, he stepped down from politics and, with his family, left Queensland and returned to England. He built a house in the town of Sevenoaks in Kent, which he called Belimba. It was demolished in 1934. This here is Hemant train station. Now the train line through here was constructed in 1889. There was a, a little siding here, a little small station. It was mainly for goods though and cargo. In 1914, a platform was built here. That's what it looked like back in the day. When they were excavating the ground here to build the platform, the workers found gemstones in the soil and the debris. I'm just on Aquarium Avenue and there's a old house here. It's not ancient, it's not some, you know, 150 year old house. It looks like to be the last house, someone's house once. But all of this is industrial, all of this here. This is the northern side of Hemant. So this here is the very northern end of Aquarium Avenue and it's remarkable because in 1889, it was the site of Brisbane's very first theme park. It was called the Queensport Aquarium and it was built just on this land over here and it was a great tourist attraction in its day. Day trippers boarded steamboats near the customs house in the city that would take them to the aquarium. Within the park were fish tanks, a penguin enclosure, performing seals, tame pelicans, a dance hall and a switchback railway, an early form of a roller coaster and which eventually got blown into the river during a storm. A zoo with monkeys, tigers, snakes, cheetahs and panthers was also an attraction. The park was badly affected by the flood of 1893 and all the animals were rescued except for the bears. It closed in 1897. So the Queen's Port Tavern used to be the Queen's Port Hotel. It was built by a publican by the name of Martin Kavanagh in 1891. He used to be the publican of the Lytton Hotel. And it really still feels like a country pub here. It's, uh, even though we're not that far from the city centre. So I'm here to have some lunch and, uh, and have a drink. And here's an old photograph I found of the hotel taken back probably at about 1930. A group of people standing out near the main public entrance. The figure on the right kind of looks like a nun, or a guy dressed as a nun. In 
memory of Lance Corporal John Harry Anning. He was a member of the Imperial Bushman Regiment fighting in the Boer War. He was born in Morningside. He died in 1901 during the fighting. Now, the Imperial Bushman Regiment actually had a fearsome reputation amongst their enemy. They were considered to be the most ruthless and deadly of all the British troops fighting. Now, this memorial here was unveiled in 1903, but it wasn't unveiled at this spot. Lytton Road, this is the intersection right here, and in the middle of the intersection, more or less, that's where the War Memorial used to be. The reason why it was moved from there down into the park was because in 1968, a car hit it. Hemant Quarry opened in 1921. Like the cemetery, this also isn't currently in Hemant. It was set up to source gravel for the local roads. However, in 1936, the workers here excavating further down in the quarry accidentally struck an underground spring, the quarry filled with water, and that was that. Much to the delight, though, of the local kids who used it as a swimming hole. Cool it. You can see in this aerial photograph from 1936 the quarry just before the workers hit the underground spring and the thing flooded. Just walking around the perimeter of the little lake here and that's going to be Wynnum Road. So we're very close to the main road. Me personally, I tend to find footage of someone walking around a park to be highly boring, so let's speed this up a little bit. <laughs> the Hemant Community Hall, originally the School of Arts, it opened in 1923. This area here back in 1924 was a new housing estate and it was called the Hemant Park Estate. The advertising literature for it describes it as having park-like blocks. That no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. Just across the road from me there on Young's Road in 1943 that was the site of a US Signal Corps radio transmitting station. The building is actually still there. It's been converted into a house and you can't see it now, it's behind those trees. It doesn't look anything like what a radio signal station used to look like, but it's just over there. After the war, it was handed over to the Commonwealth government and it continued to be some sort of radio station or radio transmitter up until the 1980s. Now these magpies here. In 1999, the Australia Trade Coast Brisbane was announced. This is a huge industrial area pulling together shipping, trade, manufacture, warehousing, distribution. The northern half of Hemant falls within that Trade Coast region. And there's more development going on. Down there is the M4 Port of Brisbane motorway. It was opened in 2002, apparently $20 million under budget and six months ahead of schedule. It links uh, Lytton Road with Port Drive, just making traffic easier to get up to Port of Brisbane and Fisherman Islands. I made a video about Fisherman's Island. Here's a link to it. Hemant, 
the last country town left in Brisbane. I wonder how much longer it can hang on to that unofficial title. Development is closing in. Thanks very much for watching the video. If you liked it, please consider hitting that subscribe button and I'll see you again on my next walk.